Let me read to you a passage from the first chapter of St. Luke's Gospel, verses 57 to 66 and then verse 80. It's the Gospel for the Feast of the Birth of John the Baptist. St. Luke writes, When the time arrived for Elizabeth to have her child, she gave birth to a son. Her neighbours and relatives heard that the Lord had shown his great mercy toward her, and they rejoiced with her. When they came on the eighth day to circumcise the child, they were going to call him Zechariah after his father. But his mother said in reply, No, he will be called John. But they answered her, There is no one among your relatives who has this name. So they made signs, asking his father what he wished him to be called. He asked for a tablet and wrote, John is his name, and all were amazed. Immediately his mouth was opened, his tongue freed, and he spoke, blessing God. Then fear came upon all their neighbours, and all these matters were discussed throughout the hill country of Judea. All who heard these things took them to heart, saying, What then will this child be? For surely the hand of the Lord was with him. That's from Luke chapter 1, verse 57 to 66, and then verse 80. We are led to think of John. In each of the Gospels, John the Baptist is presented as the one who is called by God to announce the coming of the Messiah and to prepare the people to receive him. During his public ministry, our Lord referred to John as a great and holy prophet, and the people also accepted him as such. On one occasion, <clears throat> when questioned by the religious leaders as to his identity, our Lord appealed to the testimony of John the Baptist about him. This silenced the leaders because they knew that the people accepted John as a prophet. As did the authors of the other Gospels, so too St. Luke, in writing his, his statement about the eminence of John the Baptist in the unfolding of God's salvific plan. In searching for the facts of his Gospel history, Luke narrated significant details that associated John with our Lord, not only in the inauguration of our Lord's public ministry, but in the inauguration of our Lord's very life too. John was a very great prophet whose birth was predicted by the angel of God only a little before the Annunciation of the birth of Jesus. Through his mother Elizabeth, John was a relative of the Virgin Mary and therefore a relative of Jesus Christ himself. In his mother's womb he was made holy at the coming of Mary who bore in her womb the unborn Redeemer. At her arrival bearing the Christ child, the Holy Spirit filled the soul of the unborn John and inspired his mother Elizabeth to utter her words of praise of the Virgin Mary, her young kinswoman. St. Luke tells us that the hand of the Lord was with him as he grew up, and in some way he lived for God in the wilderness, preparing for his mission, which in due course was revealed to him. We read of other prophets in the Old Testament who were called to their work, at a certain point in their lives, but John was chosen and sanctified from before his very birth. He must have attained a very high holiness, and he had great impact on the vast numbers who came to him. We read in the Acts of the Apostles how on his missionary journeys, Paul encountered disciples of John the Baptist who were unaware of his witness to Jesus. The point here is that on this day we celebrate a great saint, a great prophet who in his own person and work gave to the Old Testament its climax in witnessing to the promised Messiah. He was the last, the greatest and the holiest of the prophets and in him the holiness of the Old Testament reached its crescendo. His very precise identification of the person of Jesus as the promised one gave to the long revelation that preceded him its specific meaning. John summed up the Old Testament and pointed to the New. The prophets before John prophesied a redemptive mission for God's chosen people. In and through this people, 
all the nations of the earth would be blessed by God in the fullness of time. A Messiah was coming, and various features of his figure were hinted at and outlined. We think of the suffering servant of the later parts of the book of Isaiah. We think of the glorious figure of the Son of Man in the book of Daniel. We think of the predictions of the future offspring of David, and how in him the throne of David would never end. We think of the future prophet referred to by Moses in the book of Deuteronomy. All were to listen to him. We think of the coming shepherd whom God would raise up to care for his people. We think of the new covenant and the new heart of flesh for the chosen people prophesied in the book of Jeremiah. But these predictions were not precise in their delineation. It was John who made them precise. He pointed to Jesus as the one who would fulfill all the prophecies and expectations of God's chosen people. In this, he will forever be an outstanding model for every Christian. By his personal holiness and the fulfillment of his God-given vocation to give glory to Christ, he is our model. We look at John and he tells us to look at the person of Jesus. The Gospels preserve the record of that witness to Jesus as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, as the one who would baptize with the Holy Spirit and with fire, as the one who, while he followed after John, was before him, and as the one whose sandals he himself was not worthy to undo. John's holy life gave total credibility to that witness. So in thinking of John, we pass on to think immediately of the person of Jesus, and his witness to Jesus is the sign of a true saint. He gave glory to Jesus and led men to Jesus. So thinking of this great saint and prophet, let us think of the one from whom he received his holiness and his mission, Jesus. Jesus is the Messiah, true God and true man. He is God the Son, and he is the same being and nature as the Father. He is a man like us in all things except sin, and he is the Redeemer and Saviour of the world. He is the one we must live for and bear witness to in all the duties and events of everyday life. It is by a life of integrity, consistency and love for Jesus that, like John the Baptist, we too will be able to give effective witness to Christ, the glorious Redeemer of man.